Hi everyone. So this is a short uh, tutorial on uh, how to set up a Git repository. In order to manage a, a C++ project developed uh, using Visual Studio from uh, Microsoft. So uh, let's uh, get started. Now, the first step uh, is to choose a Git provider like uh, GitHub, GitLab, or uh, Bitbucket. In this uh, example, I'm using uh, GitHub. So I have created uh, an account on, uh, on GitHub. In order to do that, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's quite uh, simple. So you just need to go to github.com and Okay, I have the option to sign up. Okay, and uh, the steps or the information is quite slim. So you need the email, a username, and that will be all. Okay, so um, uh, you have uh, your Git um, account created on any provider. They offer the same steps. And now, uh, if you go here into your um, account, uh, you have uh, your profile, repositories, projects, and, and so on. So let's go to repositories because this is where uh, our project will be will be saved. So the second step is to create a public or private repository here. So you have this option uh, new. Okay, and now we can choose the repository name. So let's choose a name for uh, for the project. Will be like um, uh, CPP project. Okay, for example, okay. Now I can put an optional description here. I um, C++ project, okay. The option to make this uh, project public or private, I will go for a, for a public uh, project. So anyone uh, on the internet can uh, uh, find it and can uh, read the content of the project. They can't change it, but uh, anyone can uh, access it. Okay, I can add a, a readme by providing a short description about the, the project. And uh, this is very important because uh, Visual Studio uh, will generate a lot of uh, files uh, needed by the environment, uh, which they don't include the, the source files. So what I want to do is to store on my uh, Git repository only the, the source files. Okay, and not all the other files generated by the environment. And here, you also have the debug folder, which contains the exe, um, the final result of your project. So we don't need to, to store that here on, uh, on our Git repository. So I choose a Git ignore. And here you have different templates uh, on different environments. So for example, there is one for Visual Studio, which will exclude most of the files that um, Visual Studio will generate. We will see that uh, that's not uh, enough, but uh, we will change Git ignore uh, later. Okay, the license for our project. So let's go for uh, MIT license. Uh, you can check different licenses and what they mean. Okay, or you, you can choose no, no license. Okay, so I will create the repository. So that will be uh, this uh, step. Okay, so now I have my, my repository here. Uh, I have the git ignore file here, which has been created by the uh, GitHub based on the on the template that we, we have selected. Okay, so let's uh, wait on this one to, to load or let's try to uh, wait a little bit. So in the meantime, while uh, git ignore, yeah, it's uh, it has been loaded. You see here, git ignore is used to help the git client to uh, ignore um, different folders or different uh, files that uh, your project might contain. And generally these are uh, files and resources generated by the environment and they are not the source code files which actually contain your, um, your project, okay? So here you have uh, a lot of um, uh, files. Now, these are based on different plugins, different Visual Studio uh, versions. They generally try to include here most of the files that you don't want to have in your Git repository. Okay, so this is the Git ignore. Now, if you want to update this file here, you have the option to edit uh, this file uh, here online, or we can edit it uh, later on our computer. Okay, so we have our, uh, our project. Now, the second step is to make sure we have uh, uh, 
Git client, the Git client installed on our machine. So you can uh, just uh, Google for Git download. Okay. And uh, this will bring you to this uh, page where you have uh, Git clients for different uh, operating systems. So in my case, I will use the one for Windows. So uh, you can download this if you don't have Git. You can download it and uh, the installer has a step-by-step -step wizard. Just go through uh, all the steps and uh, you will be fine with the default settings. Okay, so um, let's do a simulation on that. So I will uh, download it. Okay, the 64-bit uh, version of uh, Git. So uh, I have it here. Okay, now uh, if you want to test if you already have Git before installing this one, this is very simple. Just uh, open a command prompt uh, window or a terminal. You can type here Git. Okay, and if you see this uh, output, it means you already have the Git uh, client and you can check uh, the version by typing Git uh, V. And you see, I already have the latest version for Windows. Now, if you type Git and you see something like this, I'll just do a test, just ignore this command, uh, something like this. Uh, so if you type uh, Git and you see Git is not recognized as an internal or external command, you don't have the Git client, so you need to uh, install it. Okay, to download it from here and install it. And the wizard looks, uh, like this. So let's just open the. Okay, next. Now, in my case, uh, the installer already recognizes that I have uh, Git installed. So uh, it's asking me to update it. Okay, so just go for the default options, okay, which are just fine. Next, next, uh, let uh, Git decide. Uh, Git from the command line and also from third party software, which is the recommended option is great. Uh, use uh, bundle open SSH. Okay, this is for authentication later. Okay, next, next, uh, check out window style, next. Uh, okay, default for git pull, uh, git credential manager. Okay, to manage your credentials, enable file system caching, yes. Okay, no, we don't need the options for or experimental option. So you just hit install and um, now it will install it. Okay, so uh, while Git is installing, let's see uh, what are the next steps. So I have the Git client. Okay, I have the, um, uh, the repository here, the um, CPP project repository. So in the next step is to map this repository to a folder, to a local folder on my computer. That will be the location where I will start developing this C++ project. In order to create a, a local copy of um, this repository on our computer, we need to clone it. Okay, so this is the action uh, that we will do. And um, here you have two options and uh, we can later change between them, but uh, it's important to understand the difference. So you see here, I'm again on my uh, GitHub uh, account. I see my repository. And here I have the uh, this uh, green button with uh, the code. Okay, and here I have the clone option and here there are two different ways to clone. Uh, this uh, project on my computer. So you have the HTTP secure and the uh, SSH uh, secure uh, shell um, uh, option. Now, what's the difference? The difference is that if you clone the project on your computer with uh, HTTP secure, okay, then um, uh, you can authenticate from Visual Studio or from um, uh, the terminal when you do a push with your username and the, and the password for this account here. Okay, so this will be an option. Now, if you use the secure shell, then uh, you can authenticate using uh, uh, SSH uh, keys. Um, now, normally, and this is the most common approach, is to use uh, secure um, hash uh, keys. I will um, show you both options because um, let's say 
the HTTP secure, it's, it's more simple than the second option because for this one, you need to generate these keys and to add them here in your um, account. So let's go for the first option. Now I want to clone my, my project using HTTP secure. I will just pick this uh, link from here. This will, uh, will copy this link into the clipboard. Okay, and now you can go to the location on your computer where you want to store this um, project. Okay, so in my case will be the F drive here, which is an empty drive, but you can use any location on your computer. And here, if you want to open the on Windows, the command prompt at this location, you can use this uh, simple shortcut. Just type here in the address bar uh, command, hit enter, and now um, you will see the, the command prompt uh, open here, okay, at that specific location. And this works for any location in your uh, Windows Explorer. Okay, so I have the link copied from uh, GitHub. And now I will just type git clone, okay, uh, hit pay, uh, right click, okay, because in the terminal you can't use control V or right click paste, you just right click. And now you have the link here and press enter. So what we get out of this op uh, command, if you do a dir here, you'll see now we have a folder. So I will switch back to Windows Explorer, here it is. So now I have a folder which has the exact name as my project on Git, which is a C a CPP project. And if you open this uh, project, uh, you will see uh, already you have the git ignore, the license, the read, uh, readme file. And here you have um, a hidden folder. Now, if you didn't um, disable this option, by default, Windows will not show you hidden folders. So if you want to see that, you have the option here in Windows Explorer view, and you have show, and you have uh, hidden items. Okay, so if I uncheck this one, uh, normally you will not see that folder. Okay, so show hidden items. Okay, this is for Windows uh, 11, but also on Windows 10, you have the same options, uh, but let's say they don't look this way. You, I think in Windows 10, you need to go here and you have like uh, options, view, okay, and um, just, share screen so you have view uh, and here you have um, show hidden folders or not show and by default this is set to don't show okay so now you have the you see the, the git folder now this is important because this is where git uh, will store all the versions uh, all the commits all the details about your project so this is very important folder and also here a very important file is this config here. And if you open this one in um, Notepad++, okay, you will see that here we have the action or the link which we have used to clone this project on our computer. Okay, so here is the HTTP secure. So the next step um, that we have installed the Git client is to set up the username and the email address of the client. Now, this is important, um, especially if you, if you work in a team, but also it's a good habit um, for individual projects. So on the um, uh, GitHub site, you will find um, a quick start tutorial where you see a detailed description of these uh, steps like uh, setting up Git. So I will put this uh, link in the, um, a tutorial description okay and here you have the uh, set up uh, your username and set up your commit email so uh, let's do that with the username now the information is important because every time you will commit git will record this um, information the username and the email um, of the user that uh, did the commit so like i said in teams in that way, you will see which team member has um, done those uh, changes. And for individual projects, um, you will see your uh, your name there. So um, 
let's take this uh, common from here. And I will uh, move to the folder of my project. Now, it's not important where you open the, the terminal. So right click anywhere here, uh, open in terminal and uh, the terminal will, uh, will open. Okay, and now I will uh, paste the command with the right click. Okay, and here I will say, okay. okay. So now I have configured the, the username. Now, this is not the username that you are using to authenticate on, uh, on GitHub. It's just uh, a name that you want to be associated with the, with the phone. Okay. And um, let's set up the email also. So I have the similar command here, git config user email. So let's move to the terminal. Let's uh, replace that value with the real one. Okay, and now um, you are set. So this is um, an easy to do step. And uh, again, it's part of the best practices regarding um, uh, setting up the, the Git client. Okay, so we have this folder. So what can we do right now is to create a Visual Studio C++ project here and start working. The next step will be to create a, a project, which will be our C++ project in the repository, in the local repository that we have just uh, cloned uh, earlier. So let's open a new empty project next. Okay, now here choose uh, as your main folder, the C++ CPP project, which is the local version of the repository here. So I will create my project here. Okay, select folder and let's say uh, my project. Okay, let's create it. And uh, let's create a simple uh, hello world app just to show you how you see the changes here and how you do a commit and how you push this uh, version uh, to the um, uh, GitHub uh, repository. Okay, so let's uh, add the CPP file. Okay, so let's do a very simple hello world. Oops, here, IO stream. Okay. okay. And here just say uh, standard CL standard end line hello. Okay. Let's uh, build this project and uh, let's um, uh, let's test it, okay? Just to make sure it's okay. So I see it's running, everything it's okay. If you are in Visual Studio, by default, Visual Studio has a um, Visual Git client. Normally you will see it here in the, uh, depending on, uh, on your layout, but uh, generally will be visible here. In my case, it's here the right side of my screen. I have git changes. Now, if you don't see this option here, uh, that's not a big uh, deal because you have this option here in uh, Visual Studio where you have view. And here you see all the views, all the windows that Visual Studio can uh, show it to you. And generally these are tools that we can use. And here you have git changes and git repository, okay? So even if you don't see this, uh, option here uh, on the screen, you can anytime open the Git uh, Visual Client by opening Git changes, okay, from view. Let's open this window. And what you will see right now is that uh, already the Git Client, which we have on, uh, on our machine, has identified that uh, here in the repository, in the CPP project repository, we have created a new project uh, with a new folder, my project, and has already detected the, um, the solution file, the VCX project file, and the source CPP. Now, an interesting aspect of uh, Git is that anytime you do a change on your file, if you double click here in Git changes, it will show you the, the differences. Now, initially this file didn't exist, and uh, now it's created. So we don't see a, a, a comparison between before and after the changes because 
this file has just been created, but after the first commit, uh, we will see that. Okay, now one thing which, um, uh, let's say, uh, personally, I don't um, uh, like um, is that um, Git is also including this, uh, these files, the solution file, the VCX project, and so on. Now, these are files used by the Visual Studio to manage. The Git client will ignore these files. Okay, so how do we do that? We can change git ignore on the website or we can go into our folder here. I'm moving here to git ignore and now I can edit it with notepad or any other editor. I'm using notepad plus plus. So I will go here uh, to the end of it. And here I will say, I want to add additional Visual Studio files. So what I want to ignore is the solution file, the SLN one, and also I want to ignore the VCX project ones. Okay, so let's go back here and say, um, I want to ignore VCX, sorry, let's, the CX, CX approach. Okay, uh, and let's see, if you save this file, okay, so just save it. Okay? And now if you go back to, uh, to Visual Studio, you see that uh, Git Ignore has been changed. And now it's um, showing me uh, only the VCX project dot filters. Okay, so let's ignore also that one. So I want to ignore also VCX project filters. Let's save the file. And if you go back to Visual Studio, you see uh, the only file which now is managed by the Git client is the source CPP, which is this one here. And if you double click now on Git ignore here, this is what I was uh, telling you earlier that now it's showing me uh, the version before the changes and after the changes. And with green, you see the lines that added. And generally, if you delete or um, remove some lines, you will see them marked with red, okay? So in this way, during um, uh, your project, it will be quite easy to see what, uh, what has been changed by you or by your team members, okay? So I have this, um, these changes, I have the first version of the project. So what should I do is to commit. So here, the recommendation is to try to do as many commits as you can after each major point or after each uh, time you implement a new function or a new class or you change something. So the idea is to have clear history of all the changes you did. And that will be helpful to you because it will, if you, at some point you realize that uh, you messed up something and then you can go through the history and see when that happened and why have you done on that file and why maybe it will be easier to find the reason why it's not working um, then after you made those changes. Okay, so let's do a commit. So when you do a commit, uh, always write here a comment which will help you see uh, when you go through the history, it will help you find the moment you change that file. So in this case, this will be a initial version of the project, okay? And also here I say updated uh, git ignore, uh, git ignore, okay? So then I know that uh, this will be the commit. So I'll do commit all. So right now these are all saved in the local uh, history of the project. So now I can continue working on, uh, on this project. So let's say, uh, I forgot here to say hello world. So let's change this one. Okay, you see Git is already detecting that change. So, if, so uh, let's do another commit. Updating, uh, updating uh, hello message and commit on. Okay, so I have many changes in my in my project, or this will be a daily routine. I um, open the project, do some new improvements, and before closing Visual Studio, 
what should I do is to send these changes to to the Git um, uh, repository on the uh, in the Git uh, uh, on the Git server. So how do you do that? You have these options here, uh, which generally mean pull means uh, try to download the latest version of your project from the Git repository. Push means upload these changes to your Git uh, repository. And you have this option, sync, which generally means a pull action uh, followed by a push. If you work on different devices or if you work um, in a team environment, this is important because um, then uh, before you start working on this project, uh, you are sure that you have the latest version. Okay, so this will be the recommended function to use. Now, you can use this also if you work alone on this project, okay, sync. Depending on how you clone the, the project, you see at this moment on my machine when I'm doing a, a sync, uh, it's uh, saying uh, it failed to push the uh, to remote repository because I don't have the credentials. Because uh, on my environment, on my local machine, uh, Git is uh, set up to use uh, uh, mostly SSH keys. But in your case here, when you will do a sync uh, with a high probability, you will see a pop-up uh, window asking you the username and the password for uh, your account. And um, the Git client will also manage those credentials. So you can input them only once. And after that, uh, you can um, sync your project without uh, actually being needed to uh, now, if you want to uh, switch this to SSH, to use um, SSH keys to authenticate, then um, when you clone the project, okay, so if we go back to the moment when we clone it here, uh, then you can choose the <clears throat> SSH uh, option, okay, this one from here. Or if you want to switch uh, an existing uh, project to, from HTTP secure to SSH, then uh, you just need to go here into the uh, Git folder here and you need to update this, um, uh, this file. So here, instead of uh, having the HTTP secure, now I can uh, paste the option with git at github.com, uh, my username and so on. So this is necessary only if you want to switch from user password authentication to SSH keys. Or if you, if you clone your project using a SSH, you already have this option. Okay, so right now, in order to authenticate, you need to uh, generate SSH keys. Okay, so this is an uh, optional step. Um, like I said, the, my machine is configured not to allow a username uh, password authentication on Git. It's uh, set up to use only SSH keys. So if you want to uh, switch to SSH uh, keys uh, authentication, uh, then um, uh, we need to, to do these um, extra steps. So if I go back to the, the GitHub uh, documentation uh, section, Okay, so here I have in the uh, setup uh, page, I also have the generating a new SSH key or cloning with the SSH URL. So what we want to do is to generate new SSH keys that um, we will use to authenticate on our Git repository. Okay, and uh, in order for these commands to, to work, um, the recommendation is to use the, the Git bash uh, and not the normal Windows terminal. There is a command here that uh, if you use the Windows terminal, uh, this one here, uh, you need to change it to this value, okay? So if you use the Windows terminal, you need to type only this part of the command. So let's use the, the Git bash. Now, in order to open the, the Git bash uh, terminal, anywhere here in your project, you do a right click and you have show more uh, options, okay? And uh, here you will see a uh, git bash here, okay? And uh, now let's uh, follow the, um, the documentation and uh, generate the required keys. So the first command is 
the SSH uh, key gen, which will generate the, the keys for, uh, for it. Um, and we'll associate them to, a, to an email. Okay, so let's take this command. And uh, if you go back into Git Bash, in order to paste it here, you just right click uh, paste. Okay, and now let's uh, uh, replace the, um, let's replace the email. It will ask us uh, where to store the keys, and this is the default location, and this is the default name for this uh, algorithm which is used here. So I will go for this one, press enter. Again, it's asking you for the passphrase. We don't use a passphrase because uh, every time you will do a, a synchronize or push or a pull, uh, you need to insert to type the passphrase. So I will um, use a blank passphrase, which means enter, press enter enter again. Then we have the confirmation that the keys have been generated. Okay, and now let's uh, add these keys to our uh, SSH uh, agent. So when an app like uh, Visual Studio will uh, ask for authentication on Git, the SSH agent will uh, try to use these uh, keys. So in order to do that, uh, I will use this command from here. So let's move to Git bash. Okay, again, paste. Okay, hit enter. Okay, the SSH agent is now running. And now let's uh, let's add the, the keys with using this command from here. Okay, let's paste it here. Hit enter. And now it's saying, okay, the identity has been uh, added, which means the keys now can be used. Now, before trying this from Visual Studio, uh, there is one uh, step that we need to do, and that is to load on the Git server, on the website, our public key. Because uh, here there are two keys which are used to authenticate us. So the last step is to load our key to the uh, server. So that key, should go here. So if you go into your uh, settings, in your account settings, you have this option, SSH and GPG keys. And here they are, SSH keys. And now you can say new SSH key. Okay, so in order to get the value that you paste here, again, here in the tutorial, you have this simple command, which uh, will copy the, the key uh, into the, um, uh, into the clipboard. Okay, so we can follow this step here in the tutorial. And here it is, the clip command. Or you can go into your user space, into the .ssh folder, you will find this file with the .pub extension. You can open this in Notepad and take the value board. You can use the clip command. So let's use the clip command, which generally copies that file content into the clipboard. So if I do a paste here, okay, uh, now the value is in clipboard. If you want to test this, if you open Notepad, for example, okay, and you do a paste here, uh, you will see the key, the public key, here it is. So having this value into the clipboard, we go to the uh, GitHub uh, website, Again, I'm here in the add SSH key. So we do that again. Settings, SSH keys from here, new SSH key. Now just give a name to this key, any, any name. If you have multiple devices, it will be easier to distinguish them and paste the value here and just hit add SSH. And uh, now the, the key has been uh, saved here. Okay, so I have see it. I, I can see it, I can delete it later or add other keys. So if we now go back to Visual Studio, okay, so earlier I tried to synchronize the changes, but uh, said uh, uh, that failed because the authentication didn't succeed. So if I will try now, do a pull and a sync, okay, you see now everything runs smoothly. So this machine was able to authenticate and now the changes are on my repository. So if I go 
to the website, check my repositories, okay, check the project. I can see that there were four commits uh, in the last period, okay, and uh, uh, the last one was like uh, 16 minutes uh, ago. Okay, and here are the, the changes.